السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم um, uh, This is where we stopped last time we were talking about, we were talking about state space uh, and we showed that um, sometimes we don't need to or actually in most of the times we don't need to uh, consider all the details of the world in uh, representing the state space that we will deal with in the search problem so in pathing for example uh, we don't need to uh, put uh, any details other than the location of pac-man in the states in if the problem is eat all the dots then we need the location of pac-man and also the boolean values for uh, the dots so whether each dot is uh, is eaten or not um, now let me uh, go through an example with you to show you the size of the state space so here is uh, a pac-man wallet where we have the dots here and we have two ghosts here we have the wall here in between see if so if we think about the world state we find that we have um, 120 uh, position for the uh, agent which is pac-man so pac-man can go into 120 positions here the number of dots or the food food count is 30 we have 30 dots here and uh, the uh, ghosts positions are 12 so the ghost can go up and down uh, into only 12 positions and the agent is facing one of the four directions north south east west so that's the world uh, state that's the details of the world state if i asked you how many states we have in this world what do you think how many states we have Uh, Said? Uh, 120. Only 120? 120 states only? So that's only the agent. That, that's the, that's the Pac-Man only. Right? But we are talking here about, the, uh, we are talking about the entire state here. Our entire state? Yes, so the entire world. The ghosts positions as well? Consideration. Yes, we are talking about the entire world now. We don't have even uh, any problem yet, okay? So if we are talking about the entire world, what will be the state, the, what will be the number of states here? The summations of uh, the positions. Summations or multiplications? I'm not sure. Okay, so are these um, uh, alternatives or these have to be one of the states of the agent and one of the states of the uh, of the food uh, of the of the dots and one the, one of the state of the each ghost and so on it's one of each right so these are not alternatives we don't say this or that we say this and that okay so if we do if we say this and that then this is multiplication so we should multiply the number of uh, positions of the agent which is 120 times the number of states of the dots times other things but let's say what let's let's determine what are the states of the dots if we think about the dots only what are the states side how many states we have for the dots uh, 36 36 why is that 36 no, 30 states 30 states okay what are these states? We said last time that for each dot, we need to know whether it's eaten or not, right? <clears throat> so, so there will be a Boolean value for each dot. So each dot has two states, and we have 30, 30 states. Okay. So we have 2 times 2 times 2, up to 30, 30 uh, dots. Okay, so this will be 2 to the power 30. That's the states for the dots okay now makes okay. Sense. okay so now so far <clears throat> we have 120 times 2 to the power 30 times what we now we have the ghosts right we have two ghosts each one has 12 positions <clears throat> sorry so each one <clears throat> each one has 12 positions so uh, it will be 12 for the first times 12 for the second and then we have four directions of the face of uh, Pac-Man, so we need also to multiply by four. So the number will be uh, of the word states will be 120 
times 2 to the power 30, so 124 the agent for Pac-Man positions, 2 to the power 30, which are the states of the uh, dots, times 12 to the power 2, because we have two uh, ghosts, and then 4, which is the number of directions of Pac-Man. Okay, is that clear? Of course, that's a huge number. Okay, that's a huge number. And that's the size of the the size of the world state space. Okay, that's the world state space. Now, if we think about specific problem like pathing, pathing only, what is the size of the state space for pathing? Not the world now. Now we are talking about specific problem, which is pathing. What should be the number of states we have? Any idea? Okay, Renim, Renim, just raise your hand, please, and I will call your name if I want you to answer. Okay, but I didn't call your name. Okay, so there might be other other students. Go ahead, please, Renim. Uh, in, in the passing problem, should we also include the ghosts or just Pac-Man? What do you think? Um, I mean, in this specific situation, the ghosts don't matter. So yes, exactly. The wrong exactly. Exactly. So I guess it's only um, uh, it's only one hundred and twenty for the positions. Yes. And then you might want to add the uh, the north, east, west. So. Uh, Do we care about that? Four. Do we care about that? We don't care about that. We care about going from one position to another. We we didn't specify that, for example, the agent has to be uh, facing north or east or anything. We don't care. Okay, so if that's the case, we don't care about the face of, of the of Pac-Man. So if that's the case, mm -hmm. then it's only 120 for the positions of Pac-Man, right? Okay. Okay, good. Now, how about uh, states for eat all dots? How many states we have if the problem is eat all dots? Any answer? Okay, anyone else other than Ghanim? Uh, Yusuf? Sorry. Wa alaykum as wa uh, I think it will be uh, yani changing, the, changing the 120 in the old states to 1, since it's only one case that all of the dots are eaten. But that's, the, that's the goal state, uh, Yusuf. But we are talking about all possible states. So for all possible states, should we consider the position of Pac-Man or not? I don't understand. Okay. So you, did you understand the how we got this, this number for the world states? Yes. Because we considered all of this, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what should we consider from this when we solve the problem of eat all the dots? Yeah. For example, do we care about the position of Pac-Man or not? No. Whoa, why not? Only because because we, we only want the food count to be the yani, to be all of the dots to be eaten. Yes, but how would how will you eat the dots if you don't know Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, okay? Mm. So you need to know where the where Pac Man is of course, right? So yeah. so the, the, the one hundred twenty is should be there, right? Yes. Okay. How about the the uh, booleans for the dots? Should we care about them or not? Yeah. Yes. They will be all eaten. Very good. Eventually, hopefully. Okay. So, yeah. uh, so we need this also. How about this part, which is the ghosts? Do no, we, we care? Don't care we don't care. Benefit. Yes, because they are beyond the wall. And how about the uh, direction of the face? In in the yeah in the in that definition in the definition of this problem we don't care about it. So what we only have is 120 times 2 to the power 30. Still very far from the number of world states. Of course, this is very, very, very far. It's a very small uh, state space. And this is, of course, bigger than the, this uh, space. But still, it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's smaller than, uh, than uh, the world states. Uh, of course, this number is huge. But also, still, this part is not considered. So this number, of course, is less than the number of the world states. So here I wanted to emphasize again that 
whenever we solve a problem, we should consider only the things, uh, for the details from the world that will help us solving in solving the problem. Okay, there are some details that we don't care about. For example, like here, the positions of the ghosts or the direction of the uh, of Batman, or even the dots in the case of uh, the patent problem. We don't care about that. Okay. Okay. Now let me give you another quiz. I want you to think about it for a minute and then uh, tell me if if you have any uh, at least part of the answer. So the the we have this world now. Okay. In that world we have Pac-Man. We have the dots as usual. We have three ghosts. Okay. And you know that uh, ghosts uh, uh, get scared if uh, or whenever Pac-Man eats any of the power dots. So the power dots are the dots that are uh, big white here. So this is a power dot. This is a power dot and so on. So whenever Pac-Man eats one of these power dots The uh, ghost uh, will be scared Okay, and you will be scared for some time some specific time. Let's say uh, Constant time. Let's say 10 seconds for example Okay, all of them will get scared for 10 seconds and when they comes when when they become scared Pac-Man can kill them by just getting into their position. Otherwise, if they are not scared and uh, Pac-Man uh, intersect with with their position, Pac-Man will be killed. Okay, so that's the Pac-Man wallet. In this specific problem, we want Pac-Man to eat all the dots, but with another condition, which is keeping all the ghosts scared at all times. So I want the ghosts to be kept scared always. That's my goal. Okay, that's my goal. Is to keep the ghosts. I mean, that's my that's the condition. Okay, of course, the goal is given that condition. The goal is to eat all the dots, of course. But I want to make sure that the ghosts will be scared at all the times. Because if the ghosts are not scared, then uh, <clears throat> then the game will be over for this specific game. Okay, now. Think, I hope that now the problem is clear. Now think about what should be uh, in the state space. What should we specify in the state space? What are the things that we should consider from the entire world to be in the state space? Okay, just give me one at a time. Ghanim. Ghanim. Oh, sorry, I forgot the map was closed. Okay. Um, we, we need the we need the positions of uh, all the dots. Okay. So tell, just, okay. So just one now. You said the position of all the dots only, or whether they are eaten or not. And and whether. Okay. So the position of all the dots, of course, and whether they are eaten or not. And you are talking about the small dots, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, uh, Renim. So this is for sure has to be, of course, uh, considered because we want to eat all the dots. Okay, uh, Hamza. Yes. Uh, time One left thing, Hamza. On the, uh, ah. Yes, time left on the uh, update thing. Uh, scare the ghosts. So time. How much time is left at this state? Yes, very good. And why do we need that? Uh, because we need to get to another power dot before. Yes, uh, in order to keep all the ghosts scared at all the times, we need to, to know how much time is left before they become unscared again. Okay, so once we eat the power dot, they will be scared, let's say, for 10 seconds, but then this period will, of course, decrease over time. Uh, so next second will be 9 and so on. So we need to keep track of the time that is left before they come unscared again. And this is very critical to solve this problem. Otherwise, we will not be able to know uh, if they will be, if they are scared now or not, or how much time is left. <clears throat> we will not know uh, that we need very soon, for example, uh, to eat uh, a new or another uh, power dot. Okay, so this has to be also included. Um, uh, Faisal, what else? I think we also need the position of the power dots to know when. Uh, we calculate based on the time and the position. Uh, okay. When should we go to the position of them only or something else? 
I don't think we need the position of the ghost since... No, 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 I'm not talking about the ghosts now. I'm talking about the power dots. Do we need just yeah, the position? And? Whether they are eaten or not. Yes, so the, the positions of power dots and whether they are uh, eaten or not. Thanks, Faisal. Uh, what else, uh, Saad? So I think we also need the positions of the ghosts because we don't want to eat them. Uh, because if we, we eat them, they become not scared, you know. Uh, not sure if that's... Wh why do you think if we eat if we eat any of them, they will become unscared? Yes. They'll go back to their respawn position and they will be not scared anymore. Uh, okay. Um, not sure of the original rules of the game. Uh, but that's if that's the case, yes, then we don't want to eat them. Uh, uh, but it depends on the rules of the game, of course. Okay, so if if the rule of the game is is that they will be eaten, but the others will still be scared, then uh, we of course we need to, we want to eat them. But I was also uh, uh, waiting for you to say uh, the positions. Did you say the positions of them? Of the ghosts, yeah. Uh, the positions, of of course. Okay, okay, and yeah. uh, and whether they are eaten or not. Uh, if they are not, if you don't have uh, several lives, so um, it depends also on the rules of the games. But but let's say that uh, we only need now the whether uh, we need the positions of the ghosts so that we can either eat them or avoid them depending on the rule of the game. Okay, I think did did we miss anything? Is there anything, any other information that we need to solve this problem? Any um, any other ideas? So we said the location of Pac-Man, of course. I hope so. I think uh, someone said it in the beginning. Uh, and we said that the positions and the state uh, of being eaten for the dots and for the power dots and the location of the ghost and also the timer, uh, the time left uh, for, uh, for being scared. So let's see, agent position, dot booleans, power dot booleans, ghost positions and remaining scare time. That's what we need uh, to solve this problem. Okay, um, now we will uh, talk about, we'll start to talk about the solution for search problems. And when we talk about solution for the search problems, we need to, to uh, uh, get familiar first with two um, data structures that we will uh, use as ideas. We will not actually build in memory, but we will use as, as ideas, which are the state space graphs and the search tree. So uh, from the name state space graph, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sure that you are familiar with uh, graphs, right? So graphs are uh, nodes that are connected through edges. The nodes in the state space graph uh, will represent states. So for example, here, this is the state, uh, this is one state from the, uh, from the wallet of Pac-Man. And uh, this is another state, and that's a third state, and so on. And um, the links, or the edges, or the arcs between the nodes represent the transition from one state to another. So, for example, this state here, uh, uh, if Pac-Man Pac is in this state, then it can go to this state going north, or this state going east. Right? So, uh, and so on. Uh, this node, this state can go to this node, uh, this node, uh, uh, this state can go to this node or this node. Notice also that uh, whenever we go to a state that we saw before, we just refer to it back, okay? So we don't create a new node uh, if the state uh, is seen again, okay? So it's, it's a graph, so we can have cycles, so we can go back, uh, and each, each state will have only a unique node in the state space graph. So each state occurs only once. Um, as I said, we will not build the, uh, the, uh, the state space graph in memory because it might be very big uh, in some of the problems, but it is a use useful idea to think about the problem uh, as, we, as we will see inshallah today. Saad, do you have a uh, question? Yeah, so the edges, they 
could be considered as the cost, right? Yeah, we actually sometimes we put we put the cost on the edge. Yes. So in this case, there could be like number of steps until we eat a dot, for example. Number of steps taken until we eat a dot. So that's the cost of reaching that dot. Uh, I mean, in this case, no, 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 no. The, the cost is uh, on the edge is the cost of this edge only, uh, Saad. It's not the cost from the start state. Okay, usually when we represent it uh, as a graph like that, the cost of yeah, the yeah, edge, whatever, whatever the cost, whatever, whatever how, how, how the cost is defined for, the, for your problem. Okay, uh, okay. it might be just one step. It just might be just one. Usually in Pac-Man, it's just one because it's time running. Uh, it doesn't have to, it, ha it has nothing to do with whether you eat a dot or not, but it depends on the problem. It depends on the problem definition. Okay. Okay. Uh, if in the, in the traveling problem or pathing, you saw that the cost might be the distance of the road or the length of the road. Okay. And, and so on. So it just depends on the, uh, uh, on the problem. Okay. Now that we saw an example, here's another example uh, of a state space graph. Uh, for a tiny uh, problem, you will see here that the states are represented by just letters, okay, different states. Um, now we will talk about what we call a search tree, and of course you know that there is a difference between a graph and a tree. A graph allows cycles, but the tree doesn't allow cycles. So the tree starts from the root, the root has uh, children, and each children has its own children, and so on, okay. So what, what do we mean by a search tree? We start the tree by the root of it, which is the start state. Okay, so let's say that this is the start state of our problem. Then the children of that state will be the successor of the successors of this state. Okay, so Pac-Man can go north or can go east. So we have two nodes in the second tier or the second level of the tree. So those are possible future nodes to explore. Remember, why are we doing all of that? We want a data structure or we want an idea to think about how to find a solution in the state space. We find the solution for the search problem. And we, uh, uh, we said that the search problem is represented by a state space and the successor function and the start and end uh, states. So given the state space that have all possible states uh, of course, that's theoretical, have all possible states of uh, the world, then we want to find a solution in that state space, which means that a path, we, we need to find a path from the start state to the goal state. So one way is to uh, represent the state space as a graph and try to find the path in that graph, or by a search tree. So we start searching by the root, and then we expand the root into, which is a start state, then we expand the root into children and then we spend the children into its children until we find um, the goal uh, state which means that we found the solution of course that there are lots of details here and we will talk about the details later but that's the main idea let's continue the search tree uh, we will uh, also expand the children and so on so that's what we call the search tree so the search tree uh, the start state is the root node children correspond to successors um, here's also another uh, important point, which, which is that the nodes here, although they show states, but they also they actually uh, correspond to plans. If you remember last time, uh, we, we, had, uh, we defined this terminology, a plan. A plan is a path between one state to another. Okay? And usually we start the search, of course, by the start state. So the plan here is a path from the start state to the state that is showed by the node. Okay, so that, that node actually corresponds to a plan from that state to that state. And if we have another node here, then it corresponds to a plan from that state to that state to that state. Okay, and so on. Although we just represented by the last uh, state, but it's actually a complete plan. Um, and as we said also for the graphs, for most problems, we never actually build the whole tree. Okay, so we, because it might be very huge, actually, it might be infinite in some cases. So we don't build the search tree in advance, we just, uh, completely, but we just build it incrementally. We call it on demand. Okay, it 
based of course on the strategy that we will inshallah uh, study based on the strategy we build the search tree on demand okay that's uh, also important point here is just a comparison between the, st the state space graph and the search tree so for the state space graph that we uh, saw earlier this is the um, this is the entire graph and that's the, that's a solution in that graph okay that's a solution s to d to, to e to f uh, to r to f to g that's a solution that's the red path and the search tree for the corresponding search tree for that state space graph is this one we start by the search state then the successors are the children d e p we find that uh, the successors of s is r d uh, e through this link and p so we have d e p then if uh, we uh, expand the d we will we will have b c and e if we expand the e we will have h and r and so on okay until we reach uh, the goal state which is g still we didn't uh, say the exact algorithm but that's the nature of the uh, of the uh, search search algorithm okay we expand this search tree in some order until we find a solution or maybe you can declare that we couldn't find any solution here is a quick quiz for you uh, consider this uh, state graph that has only four states okay tell me how big is the search tree of course starting from the start state the corresponding search tree for this graph how big it is any answers anyone other than sad How big is the search tree? Okay, Abdurrahman. Uh, is it uh, three levels? Three levels. So tell me what are the three levels? So first of all, at the beginning, there's the S. Okay, very good. Let me uh, write here. S. There's two branches from there. Okay. So one for the A, one for the B. Okay, sorry. A and B. Yeah, okay. everyone has also two branches. That's not very good. And everyone has two branches. Let's say take A. Yeah. So A will go to? Uh, B or G. B or G. Okay. Yeah. And that's and it? For the B. Um, yeah. C. Yeah, that's it. But how, the, the same for the B. But how about B here? B will have a cycle. So the A. Uh, okay, so three, the tree has no cycles. So B has to go to again to A, right, and G, and so on, right? A will be expanded, B will be expanded. Yes, it will not end. Very good. So that means that the size of this tree is what? Infinity. Is infinity. Very good. Okay. So in this case, the size of the tree will be infinite. Okay. I think because we have a cycle. In the because graph. yes, exactly. Because we have a cycle in the graph. So even that very tiny state space graph, the search tree can be huge. The search tree can be huge. Okay. So as we uh, as we do it, uh, it's it's it can it can go uh, infinitely. Okay. Uh, Saad, do you have a question? No. Uh, okay. Yeah, I answered it. Okay. Good. Uh, okay, so uh, it's important, of course, that you uh, notice that there are repeated structures in the search tree. So B, A, G will be uh, repeated, of course. Uh, also A, B, G will be repeated and so on. And that's that's why the, uh, the size of the tree will be infinitely. It will be infinite because we have a cycle here. Okay, now let's talk about tree search. So we talked about search tree. Now we we'll talk about tree search, which means that we need to do search within the tree. Okay. Now let me ask you before we go into this: Why are we doing all of that? What is our goal here? What are we looking for, Faisal? I think uh, we want to know later if we can reach the uh, goal, uh, the goal point we want. And see in how many levels we can get to it, which is the fastest way. Yes, so, so the goal is to find a solution within the state space. Okay, so within the entire state space, of course, 
as I said, we will not build the entire graph or, or, or the entire tree. But theoretically, if, they, if we have this graph or the tree, we want to find uh, a way uh, to find a solution for that problem within that state space. Okay, so um, now we will study a, a generic or general strategy for tree search. Um, and, and we'll see the, the, the algorithm uh, maybe in the next slide. But let me uh, first go through this example with you quickly to show you what exactly we will do before we see the pseudocode. So let's um, consider the example, the traveling example again. We want to go from Arad to uh, Bucharest. So if I want to build the search tree, I will start from Arad, right? And um, and then, of course, this green one is the entire search tree. But remember, we will not build it uh, uh, for, uh, in the beginning completely. We will build it incrementally. Okay. So here is the um, the general idea of the algorithm. We will keep track of a data structure called the fringe. So the fringe will have at any point in time. The fringe will have the plans that we will explore in the future okay so remember in the search tree we said that each node is actually is not just one state it's a plan from the start state to that state okay so the fringe will keep track of all the potential plans for the future that i will explore in the future in the beginning i will add to the fringe just the start state because that's how i will start the search in the search tree so in the beginning, the fringe will only have one node, which is the start state. Then we will select generally from the fringe one of those plans. And don't, we don't care now about how or which node we will select. Let's assume that we have a strategy by which we will choose one of the plans that we have in the fringe now to be explored next. And then once we got that plan or that state, we will check if that state is the goal state, because if it's the goal state, then we are done. If not, then we expand it by its children in the search tree, which are, of course, the successors of that state. So if we start from Arad, of course, Arad is not the goal state, so we'll have to uh, expand it because it's the only node in the fringe in the beginning. So we will expand Arad to the three successor cities. Notice that Arad now became highlighted, which means that it's no longer in the fringe because we selected, we, we get it out of, of the fringe, okay, and we expand it. Once we expand uh, a node, then we remove it from the fringe. Okay, it's no longer in the fringe because it, it is explored already. Now, what we have in the fringe is, the, is these three nodes, okay? So we will have to choose one of them and then of course, we had to choose one of them and check if that one that was chosen is the goal state or not. If not, then we need to expand it. So let's say that we selected this node or this plan or this state. Now it's not the goal state, so we'll have to expand it to its successors. Okay, so we will always expand out the potential plans, which are the three nodes, and we will maintain a fringe and we didn't say what the, the actual structure of the fringe, but it's a data structure that has the set of uh, potential plans or partial plans that are that will be considered or will be explored in the future. And of course, in the search uh, that we are doing, we will try to expand as few nodes as possible. As few nodes as possible. Why is that? Why do we need to expand uh, as few nodes as possible? Because we don't want to spend more time in search. We want to find a solution as soon as we can, which means with the least cost possible. Okay, so as we expand more nodes, that means that we are taking more time in finding a solution. So that's the general idea. In the next slide, we will see um, a pseudocode for it, but that's the general idea. We keep a fringe, we add to the fringe the nodes that we expand uh, and, and that will, we will, be, will be expanded in the future. Uh, sorry, we, we add to the node, we add to the fringe, the nodes that will be expanded in the future. Um, and then we choose one of them. We see if it's the goal or not. And, and if not, then we expand it and so on. Okay. Before taking your questions, 
I know that you might have some questions. Let me go through this pseudocode and then I will take, inshallah, your questions. So this is the code or the algorithm that we just described in the previous slide. So the tree search algorithm takes the problem, which is uh, including, of course, the state space with the four components that we uh, discussed uh, earlier, which are, if you remember, the um, uh, the state, the states, or the set space, the successor function, the start state, and the goal state. It also takes a strategy. Okay, so this is the strategy by which we will choose one node to expand or to consider uh, now from the fringe. Okay, and we don't care about the exact strategy now. Let's say that there is a strategy, and we actually in this in the course in the in the coming. A week or so, we will study like six or seven different strategies. Uh, but for now, let's assume that there is a strategy that will tell us which node to select now from the fringe. Uh, and this algorithm returns either a solution or failure. First, note that we said a solution. Okay, we didn't say all solutions and we didn't say the optimal solution. We said a solution. That means that the solution might be the best solution, might be the worst solution. It's not guaranteed uh, to be the best or the worst, okay? So it will find a solution if, uh, the, the, of course, based on the strategy, or it might declare failure. It might say, okay, I couldn't find a solution. So that's the outcome of this algorithm. Now, in the algorithm, as we mentioned in the previous slide, we will initialize the uh, search tree or the fringe, so whenever we say search tree here, that's the con the concept, right? So the search tree is the concept, but actually in the implementation, we will uh, 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 represent the search tree by the fringe. That's actually what we need. We don't need to keep the whole, the whole tree, we just keep the fringe. And the fringe, if you, if you notice, has the, leaf, the leaves of the tree so far, okay? So initially, we will add just the initial state or the start state to the fringe. And then we have this loop, okay? The first thing in the loop, we will check if the fringe is empty or not. If there are any candidates for expansion now or not. Because if the fringe is empty, that means that we don't have any plans to explore next, which means that we didn't find a solution so far, so we should return failure. But if there is at least one candidate for expansion, which means that there is something in the fringe now, then we will choose one of the nodes in the fringe according to the strategy. So this is where the strategy will be used. That's the only position in the algorithm where the strategy will be used. But it is very critical uh, um, decision. Okay, and you will see that it makes a big difference which node to expand next or to explore next. Okay, but let's now, for for the general idea, let's, uh, let's assume that we have the strategy and the strategy will choose for us the node that we will expand. Now, the next step is to check if that node contains the goal state. Did we reach the goal state? If that's the case, then of course we are done because we found the solution. Remember, every node corresponds to a plan from the start state. So if that node contains the goal state, then we are done. We found the plan, we find the path, we find the solution, we found the solution from the start state to the goal state. So at that point, we should return the corresponding solution. Else, if we couldn't find uh, the goal state, that means that we didn't reach the goal yet. So we'll just get this node out of the fringe and we expand it, okay? by adding the successor nodes to the fringe or by adding the resulting nodes to the search tree. So what, what we are doing actually here is to add the successors to the uh, fringe, which is like ex uh, expanding the node by its children in the search tree. Okay, remember, the search tree is the concept, but in reality, in the implementation, we don't have a tree. We just have a fringe that has the leaves of the tree so far. Okay, now that we added those nodes, we'll go back to the beginning of the loop and see if the fringe has any plans. If not, we declare failure. If any, then we uh, select one of the nodes and then 
uh, we uh, expanded or not based on whether we reached the goal or not and so on okay so that's a loop that will end in one of two cases whether the fringe is empty we return failure with and uh, or uh, we found the goal state we return a solution now it's very clear that this solution depends on the strategy um, because it might be the optimal it might be not um, we don't know so this al this algorithm doesn't guarantee that we will find the optimal solution so we have three important ideas in this algorithm the fringe which which is the data structure that will keep track of the leaf the leaves of the tree or in in semantically or in reality these are the plans that we will explore in the future the idea of expansion that we remove one node from the fringe and we add back to the fringe all of its successors and the exploration strategy this is the strategy that uh, we determine for us which node to expand next which node to select from the fringe now to expand next so the main question that uh, will control the uh, behavior of this algorithm is which fringe nodes to explore and this question is answered by the strategy here so now if we have a strategy we'll just plug it in into the algorithm and and this algorithm should find a solution to any search problem remember as we said uh, in the previous lecture or maybe the, the 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 one before it we call it a search problem if we can represent it into these four things the uh, state space the successor function the start state and the goal state so in if we have any uh, a real world problem that we can convert it to a search problem now we can solve it by this algorithm given that we have a strategy and we will inshallah study six or seven of them so that means that we have a, a framework now for a solution it's called the general tree search and uh, once we have a strategy we can plug it in and we can uh, find a solution it's not guaranteed whether we will find the solution the optimal way or not but some of the strategies will find the optimal solution S solutions my, uh, some might not it depends on the strategy as we will study inshallah uh, next inshallah in the next lecture we'll start to study the strategies now let me take your questions hamza um, isn't this uh, loop susceptible to getting stuck in a cycle uh, yes yes unless we unless we try to avoid that explicitly in the loop if we found uh, found that we return it back to uh, a plan that we explored before then we should we should abandon it. Uh, yes you are right okay uh one Will it return back to those leaves or will it go forward? No, whenever, whenever we expand the leaf, we get it out of the fringe and we, it should not be expanded again unless we go back to it if there is a cycle in the state space. Okay, the, the other leaf will not be given. Like, like uh, where, uh, let's choose one of the leaves, right? Yes, the strategy is to choose one of the leaves, the current leaves of the tree. Because remember, remember, yeah, remember that, remember that we don't build the tree completely from the beginning. We build it incrementally. Okay. So we are, we are exploring the tree, um, step by step. Okay. Uh, so we will, at, at any point in time, we might have some leaves. So we will choose one of them. Okay. After choosing one of them, like, uh, it will, uh, the other leaves, the remaining leaves will be... Will be kept in the fringe for the future plans, yes. Yes, we only select one of them at a time. Okay, any other questions? Okay, let me uh, type... Uh, Ghanim, keep your question until we go through the example, and then I will come back to it, okay? Okay, now let's go through an example here. So let's say that we have this three, uh, let's, uh, this uh, state space graph okay, that we saw earlier. Now we want to do the tree search over this uh, graph or, 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 or over this problem. 
okay, that is represented by this uh, state state space guy. So I will keep here two. Uh, let me. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I will keep here two sides. On the left side, I will show you the search tree as we build it, or as we explore it, and on the right side, I will t I will show you the f what the fringe will have. So this is in code means that in your implementation, what what will be in memory uh, at uh, at any time will be listed here. Okay, just to show you that yes, we are doing tree search. Yes, we are searching through the search tree, but we are actually not. Uh, 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 building a tree in memory, it's just a list of uh, leaves. So we will start the search tree by, of course, the start state S. Okay, so uh, in the code, we'll just have S as the only node now in the fringe. Now, if you remember the algorithm, uh, we are going to through the loop now. The first step in the loop is to check if the fringe has any node or not. Of course, now the fringe has one node. So we'll continue by selecting one of the nodes. Since uh, the fringe has only one node, then we'll select it. Now notice that it is highlighted, which means that it is already selected and already out of the fringe now. Since uh, it is selected, we'll have to check whether this is the goal state or not. Of course, the start state here is not the goal state. The goal state is G. So the next step, since it is not the goal state, is to expand it. So in the search tree, we expand it, of course, by the successors, which are D, E, and P. But in reality, we expand it by, we cross it, of course, because it's now uh, out of the fringe, and we expand it by the three successor, the, the, three, the three plans from the successors. So it's not just D, E, and P. No, it, as, as we said, each node in the tree corresponds to a plan from the start state. So we have S to D. S to E, S to P, correspond, corresponding to these three plans. Okay, so uh, now we have uh, these three nodes in the fringe. We'll go back to the loop. The loop, of course, will check whether we have anything in the fringe. We have, of course. Now we need to select one of them. Let's say that we selected D. Let's say that the strategy tells us select D. Okay, now D is out of the fringe. And D is not the goal state, so we'll expand it to its successors, which are B, C, and D. So if you look at D here, you'll, feel, you'll see that uh, its successors are uh, C, E, and B. Okay, B, C, E. Uh, again, in the code, we will cross S to D and add back S to D to B, S to D to C, S to D to E. Okay, now let me ask you, how many nodes now, or how many plans now we have in the fringe? Ghanim? Five. Five. What are the five? Uh, S to E, S to P, S to D to B, S to D to C, S to D to E. Very good. Okay, notice that E here. Uh, appeared twice, but these are different plans. Okay, so S to E is different from, of course, S to D to E. So we have five uh, nodes now in the fringe. Thank you, Ghanim. Now, we the next step is to select one of these nodes. Okay, so let's say that the algorithm, the strategy, selected E for us. This E, not this E. So it selected S to D to E. Now, this is not a start, uh, this is not a goal state, so we'll have to expand it to H and R. So now we'll cross S to D to E and we'll add uh, um, the path to H and the path to R. Now we select a new one. Let's say that we selected R. Uh, we expand it to F. So we, we will cross this one and we add F to the fringe. Now we'll select one again one. So up to this point we have one, two, three, four, five, six nodes in the fringe. Okay. Let's say that we select one of them. Let's say that we select F. So F will be expanded to C and G. Now we cross F here and we add C and G. Okay, now notice that we added this plan, which includes the, the, the goal state, to the fringe. But we cannot declare that we found the solution until we uh, select 
from the fringe a state uh, a, a plan that has the goal state okay so we have to continue so when we continue of course uh, just for that example we will select g it happened that the strategy selected g but we could have selected e for example or h or c or whatever so let's say that we selected g now we can declare uh, of course it will be closed because it's out of the fringe but now we can declare a solution now we can say that because we found the goal state we can we can say that we found this solution okay of course there is a remaining part of the tree here but we didn't explore so this is the only part of the tree that we explored and as you saw we didn't have to build the tree in memory as a whole we just build it uh, on demand and we only keep uh, track of the fringe. Okay, so that, uh, that will be it for, uh, the, uh, for this example. Any questions before we stop? Sam? So you just illustrated the uh, depth first search, right? No, no, no. Actually, no. It's, I mean, it's quite similar. Uh, okay, if it's quite similar, then it is not, because the depth first search will be studied in the next, next lecture. Okay, so this is just a random strategy now. We don't care about the exact strategy. It is might has some similarity with the uh, depth first, but it's not depth first. Okay. Uh, Ghanem? This one, this answer is not really optimal answer. So it's shortest route? No, it, it okay, we, as we said, this algorithm, in general, is not guaranteed to find the best answer. Okay, so it might be just by chance to be the optimal. I think it is the only, uh, maybe I don't know. No, it's not the shortest. If we, uh, if we uh, define, if you go to e, yeah, yeah. Right. If we define the cost by the number of edges, then it's not, it's not even the shortest. Okay, but it's as th this is why we said a solution. We didn't say the optimal solution. Any other questions? Uh, um, there is one thing that. So uh, let, let me, Ghanem, let me take uh, Abdurrahman's question and then get back to you. Okay, okay Abdurrahman? Uh, doctor, I need to know your office hours. Um, the office hour. Uh, it is on, on, the, on the blackboard. I don't remember which day. I think it's either Tuesday or Thursday. I don't remember now. But check it but and... It's one office hour. Yes, it's one office hour, yes. Yes. Uh, Hamza okay. says it is It is Thursday. I'm not sure. Check, yes. Probably it is it's Thursday. It is Thursday. Um, uh, check it, please, in the syllabus and it's, in the blackboard. Thursday. Yes, but if it's not uh, good for you, just email me. Okay? Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, last question. Uh, for... For my friend, it's, uh, it's Tuesday from 10 to 10.55. Okay, uh, I don't... My question. Okay, uh, Tuesday or Thursday, I'm not sure. Please check the syllabus, okay? Or, and, and blackboard. Uh, I checked the blackboard. Okay. Uh, as for my question, um, uh, can we add like a, a, an extra bit to the actual cycle? For example, uh, to, to improve upon the, the quality of the, uh, the final answer. For example, instead of just going to uh, one level, we can add maybe a second. Okay, we will see, uh, Ghanem, inshallah, starting next lecture, we'll see several strategies, okay? And you will see that one of them actually will give you the optimal solution, but it has disadvantages. So we'll study, inshallah, all of that. Stay tuned for next lecture, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. Okay, with that, we'll stop here. Uh, thank you, and inshallah, talk to you on, on Tuesday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.